Welcome to Absolutely Obsolete. And today, it's Retro Magazine Day. Yes, I hope you like the little intro. Uh, well, basically, I thought today I'd just have a quick video looking at my favourite magazine, and that is Games Master. Now, I've got a few issues here, so I'll just show you the front covers. So, we've got a very great Tomb Raider one here. Uh, this game is going to be huge. Don't miss this one's big in big review to find out why. Mm, well, we definitely knew, uh, well, know now that it was a big, big game. Well, yeah, it's, look at it, it's just the, the cover really stands out, it looks, it looks brilliant. So we've got that one, and we've got Tekken, Tekken 3, what's more to say, it's Tekken 3, that was a great game as well. I brought these off a um, eBay, I think, um, a few issues, just some that stood out to me. So we've got Tekken 3, big one again. Um, then we have the brilliant Resident Evil 2. Yes, um, another great game, absolutely brilliant PlayStation game. A lot of these are from the PlayStation 1 era, um, an N64. And of Sega, Sega Saturn era. Um, and when you look at these as well, you kind of really look and realise how badly the Saturn was doing because you can just see there's so limited reviews and so much limited content, so it kind of really shows you how badly the Saturn was doing at the time. Here we go, look, oh, Tekken. Take that. Street Fighter trying to take on Tekken. A 2D game versus a 3D game. Well, it still did well, but we were all about 3D back in the 90s. But yeah, I thought I'd have a little look. So I think I'm gonna focus on the first one, which was the Tomb Raider one, because I think it's one of the earliest ones I've got. And let's just have a little look at it together, hey? I think that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Right, let's have a quick drink as well of, of me a tea. Ah, as I said, it's just a little video. I might actually do um, a few more if you guys want to look at it. Uh, but yeah, look, the official Channel 4 magazine. Yep, it used to be a TV show. Now, I wish they'd still did this TV show. Or oh, maybe even brought it back because it was pretty cool. And uh, if you're not too sure, if you're too young, you wouldn't have seen it then um, just go on YouTube and type in Games Master and I, I think they've got full episodes on it and everything but anyway this is what magazines used to look like back in the 90s they were in your face just colours and pictures everywhere and you'll see like compared to like a more minimalistic kind of look to magazine, magazines today like look this is actually <laughs> this is a Playstation 1 advert for Crash Bandicoot to <laughs> you just wouldn't think it would you look is it there's a there's a dude in a mask on top of a house. I think this house actually came on um, sale um, not too 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 long ago as well. Imagine that you could actually say I the house that um, um, they did a Crash Bandicoot advert on. <laughs> just just a dude in a mask looks crazy. But yeah, petition petition against Dominic Wheaton. Oh dear. Oh, it's just it's just mad isn't it it's just, it's just, it's just look that's the only clue there that it's, it's even a playstation advert there we go just there <laughs> madness isn't it right the next one yep as you can see it's, look it's already everywhere look that's still the continuation from the advert it's just what the heck so arcade tv i don't even know what crusher is boogie i, I don't know i don't know i think they're just coming up with buzzwords now oh all right Again, oh here we are, a big advert, obviously a big advert for Tomb Raider because this is actually the uh, Tomb Raider um, issue, so it would make sense to have a big issue, uh, uh, a big advert of this, and yeah, yeah, it looks good doesn't it actually, uh, I, to be honest it's not too in your face, it's pretty colourful, nice to look at, yeah. But yeah, so we've got reviews, skillage, whatever that is, I think it must be some kind of tips thing maybe, previews, 
So we still do a lot of things, we still do reviews and magazine previews. Skillet, I don't think Skillet is in modern day <laughs> um, magazines. Um, Network, the first M2 game shots, wow. Oh, I don't even know what M2 is, it must have been a game that escaped me. Uh, yep, Soul Calibur, or I think it was Soul Blade or something to begin with. Just, just, just look at it. Oh, next month they're 50. Ridge Racer shots. More shots leaked. But yeah, as you can see, it's just everything's kind of like 3D. The 3D was coming. They even had the 3D uh, um, uh, letters and everything. But just, just to indicate that, just to say, yep, we're definitely a 3D magazine. Now I might be waffling a bit because, to be honest, I just want to look at this for my own nostalgia and maybe for yours. Um, I think uh, celebrities of the time. I don't I can recognise any of them. There they are, Games Master. The uh, TV show, I think it was. He had a different theme every year. I think he had one which was industrial, one which was like beach themed, and one which was heaven themed as well. So, yeah, here we are. Look at the charts as well. So we've got uh, Mario and Yoshi on the Game Boy, Fever Soccer '96. So that kind of dates this definitely. Toy Story, My Micro Man, oh Micro Machines 2, Worms, Road Rush 2, great game. Oh, so we've still got even Mega Drive games in the charts as well in this. Um, Sonic and Knuckles, obviously great game. Tasmania Mars, oh Tasmania Escape from Mars, yeah, that's a that's a, a great game. Uh, and I think this is, it looks like it's more 3D oriented, and that's oh yes, yeah, it says cartridge and CD chart, so that makes sense now. So Exhumed, uh, Nice into Dreams, a good one. Resident Evil, I don't know what the hell Z is. Uh, Quake, obviously a good one. And these ones probably you won't really re revisit them now. A lot of racing games have aged, unless they're really arcadey. Another quick drink of tea. I don't know what Pitbull is. So what I love about this era of games is there's still so many games I've never played. I mean, absolute loads. Um, hot slots. Hot slots. I don't know. Uh, this, this looks like little mini previews of things. So. Yeah, let's just keep going. It shows some other 3D version of Street Fighter, which I played. I think I played once. I think I might have rented it or something. But it didn't. It was quite slow compared to its 2D one. Mech Warrior 2, The Incredible Hulk, the Pantheon Saga. Oh, that looks like absolute rubbish. Um, Power Move Pro Wrestling. Yep, that looks brilliant. Not fight. <laughs> what the hell is that meant to be? I don't even know who is. Floating Runner. Quest of the Seven Crystals. See, I've never even heard of that game myself. I've never come across it. Could be good, actually. It looks like a fun little... I don't know. It actually looks quite quite terrible as well at the same time. <laughs> He's shooting at something while floating. <laughs> Only on PlayStation, of course. Because, it ha because it's 3D, um, it's got to be good, right? Iron and Blood. Another kind of Tekken style fighting game which I've never played which looks actually looks a bit more like um, uh, kind of a fighting based game isn't it but like Soul Blade Realm of the Hunter don't know what that is see that's a good thing if you buy some of these old issues you can come across games which you never would have even known first look see, look just look nothing flows everything's just different colours and it's just a bit a bit crazy really Command and Conquer. Well, we know Command and Conquer was a great game. Even on the PlayStation, I think that's when I first played it on the PlayStation. Great game. Command and Conquer Red Alert Special. Oh, so it's got um, Red Alert as well. On there as well. Capture it. Return Fire. Now, I've heard of Return Fire. Again, I think I've never played it though, but I've heard of that. So I did that using a real war image on it and just changing the flag. <laughs> Jesus. Probably get a lot of uh, a lot of uh, negative abuse if they did that nowadays. Yes, Mortal Kombat 3. Now, to be honest, after Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, I never got on with 3. That running mechanic just threw me off. Really didn't like it. Really hated that running mechanic. If they got rid of that and it was more like Mortal Kombat 2, and the sprites were too small. Those sprites were far too small for me. Oh, well, reviews, so we've got Tomb Raider. So look, this is the epic Tomb Raider review. Lots of images again everywhere, everywhere you go. What a clever girl she is. Now you got to remember that um, when this came out, it really was a 
amazing. Like my friend had Tomb Raider, um, and I went to his house, and it's the first 3D game where I actually felt like I could do anything. I could climb. I could do anything I actually wanted to do, um, and it was amazing, really, absolutely amazing. Um, you just felt like freedom, and you, it was the first game where I actually saw the consequences of my own death. Like in a platformer, normally it'd be um, you'd, the screen would just go black, or you just fall down a hole, and then um, it would say "game over" or you've lost a life. But this, if you fell into a pit, in into some spikes, you saw that death animation. Or if you drowned, you saw saw that death animation. Or if she fell from a high, which was a bit too high, and you'd hear that crumple of her bones, and it had it was impactful. And I think people nowadays kind of take that for granted like but I don't people say this this game's lost it's the controls have aged and the graphics have aged but I still think if you go back with that mindset it's a great atmospheric game where you can really kind of get into it and really um it's, it's, it's kind of reminds me of The Witcher 3 and I'm sure not many people have made that comparison but um there's been times in The Witcher 3 where I've gone swimming or um I've gone, uh, and it's got the breath bar as well, and you're swimming, so that kind of reminds me of it. But you're in like some kind of like tomb-like place, and you, you're looking for some switch, and I just think, this is echoes of Tomb Raider here, and it kind of gives you that feeling. So uh, that's one thing I think, I think, I can't speak, that's one thing I think I like about um, uh, The Witcher 3, um, is the fact that it's it's still got some of those early 3D kind of things, the things that made an early 3D game like Tomb Raider good. Anyway, let's carry on looking. Wipeout 2097. We're not too far away from that, really, if you think about it. We're in 2020 now. Mad, isn't it? 2020. I remember playing games which was set in 2020 something, and it was everything was robots and futuristic flying machines. And we've pretty much got all the same stuff. The only thing that's changed is the televisions, really, and mobile phones. Brilliant. Street Fighter Alpha 2. Street Fighter Alpha 2. Brilliant again. 2D fire, you know what you kind of expect from that. But again, just the artwork. Look, look, look at this. This is an advert. Look at this advert. <laughs> so bad. Uh, yeah, uh, you can win a CD player and a pocket television. Woo! And some shoes, some soccer boots. Uh, oh, I remember these cans. Uh, what is oh my god, actually, I know what to do. Win a CD system, remote TV, and a giant can. A giant can, what, what you can store your high value fighting stuff in there, I don't know. <laughs> Who's gonna want a giant can? And uh, this is what computers used to look like. Look at that. That was a PC. Very different to what they're like now, isn't it? Uh, the are black machines now, very small a lot of the time now. But yeah. And again, this dates a bit. Look, win friends, win a set of pictures signed by the stars. Ooh, why are we. Alien attack, what the heck? Um, anyway. So what else we got here? Sonic 3D Flicky's Island. Yes, that was a good game actually. Um, on the Mega Drive, really good. Um, came on the Saturn. I think it had better music as well. But yeah, it wasn't bad. It, it it never was a proper 3D Sonic game though. It. I feel like the Saturn owner, owners kind of got like shafted on that. They should have got at least that Sonic Extreme demo. They should have got something more than that. But that is what came out, and of course we've got here uh, Destruction Derby 2, yes, Destruction Derby 2, Top Gun and Robo Pit. Now, I've never played Top Gun, I wonder if it's a bit like Ace Combat, looks alright. Robo Pit, Robo Pit, don't know what Robo Pit is, looks like a weird fighting game which looks terrible, kind of reminds me of Balls, have you ever played Balls on the uh, Mega Drive, now that was a terrible game, kind of pseudo 3D kind of look. and. Just you know, a load of balls fighting each other, and the balls kind of like made up like human ish looking figures, but oh, it's so weird. And I actually own it as well, even though I hate it. I just couldn't, it was just nostalgic for me because I rented it once. Genie Wars, yeah, we are Sega Worldwide Soccer 97. And even now, if you go into charity shops, you still find them littered with old sports games. They were everywhere. Tetris Attack, another type of Tetris. More adverts here. We've got games guaranteed to ruin your social life. Now, I would agree with that, because that's a great game. Uh, not brilliant. 
again, I'm not really into the sport game, so... Oh, war, the Woolworths. Woolworths, we all remember that. If, if you was in the 90s, one of my favourite shops, that was. Absolutely one of my favourite shops. I got all my stuff from there. Project Overkill. Uh, you know, it's, it's, what a great name, honestly. Um, a lot of games at this time had weird, just stupidly over-the-top names like that. Ah, here we are. Another Woolworths advert. Now, this is more better. Tekken 2, great game. Final Doom. Brilliant. I've got Doom, the, the, the original Doom on PlayStation 1, but not Final Doom. Exhumed and Syndicate Wars, all great games. Uh, that one I still need to pick up, actually. It's a good first-person shooter. Starwinder and Har Harb... What? Steel Harbbringer. That's a weird name. Actual Golf. I used to watch my dad play this all the time. Actual Golf games, tennis games, and Soviet Strike and Jungle Strike and all that kind of stuff. He loved those kind of games, but then he moved on to PC not long after that and got into Medal of Honor series and stuff. Uh, PlayStation and GM recommendations. So these are recommendations for games on each of these systems. So what we have, we have PlayStation, Resident Evil. Obviously a good, uh, a good option there. Uh, Wipeout 2097. Um, Tekken 2. Buster Move. I did ask Power Soccer. Again, I'm not bothered about sport games. Dial Trilogy, love that game. It's basically three games in one. You can have a driving game, um, a third-person kind of shooting game, and a light gun game. Really, really, really fun. Crash Bandicoot, obviously a classic. Uh, Fate of Black, never played that. Um, and Doom. Well, Doom is Doom. It's brilliant. Let's see. The Saturn, actually. Um, actually, I think for the PlayStation, I think the best games here would be either Crash Bandicoot, Tekken 2, or Resident Evil. Um, I'd probably go Resident Evil as my favourite. And then Crash Bandicoot, and then Tekken 2. But for the Saturn, Virtual Fighter 2, really good game. If anything, I think it rivals um, uh, Tekken 2. Sega Rally, one of the best racing games ever made. Brilliant game. Nice Into Dreams, just think of it as Sonic, but you fly. That's basically the game in my eyes. You are flying Sonic. Buster Move 2, not really that bothered about that. Um, Exhumed, there it is. Exhumed, that um, first person game. Um, Street Fighter Alpha, yep, the Saturn got the best ports of 2D fighting games, um, definitely, especially if you had the um, uh, cartridge you stick in the back for extra megabytes of power. Yes, yes, that was definitely, uh, well, just look at that actually. They've got the full like um, subwoofing kind of system going on. Uh, that's cool, that. Little tiny screen though, that on top. Well, anyway, it looks like we've got Quake. Quake, we know Quake's brilliant. This really was the machine for first-person shooters. Quake, you've got RPG Daggerfall, The Elder Scrolls Daggerfall. Um, you've got Duke Nukem 3D, a fantastic game. Um, it'd be a bit confusing if you didn't know which was what, because that, that looks like it's Quake, actually, above Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem. So for me, I, if back in the day, I'd probably think, is that what Duke Nukem looks like? <laughs> um, and it, obviously, you've got your yeah, um, kind of like... Syndicate, uh, not Syndicate, uh, oh yeah, Syndicate Wars, Civilization, Satellite 2, those kind of like above kind of like kind of games, what are like Command and Conquer type games, kind of. Right, let's see the next page. I'm just gonna have to, oh, adverts and stuff. All right, all right, here we go. So we have, um, oh, because the, uh, I don't think the N64 was actually out just yet. So this is like the USA goes. 64 crazy now this was originally going to be called the ultra 64 but um they obviously changed it now if you ever play the um arcade machine for killer instinct it will actually mention the machine being called ultra 64 coming soon to ultra 64 but that obviously never happened um because it was called the n64 instead but we did. I think they did get Kill Instinct Gold, which was a bit similar, but not as good looking as um, the arcade machine. Namco say yes to N64. Hey. Now they were going to get Final Fantasy VII, but they couldn't fit it on these cartridges. It, it's just it had so many kind of like cutscenes and pre-rendered backgrounds. It, it just couldn't fit it, um, so it never came. So I think it was one of the first Nintendo consoles that that never had a Final Fantasy on it. 
Wave Race 64. Another another pretty good game. Again, it's arcade racer, so I'll let it I'll, I'll let it slide. I'm not. I don't mind those. They're pretty good. They are pretty decent arcade kind of games. It's still not 100% my cup of tea. This this particular one, even though I own it. Mario Super Mario 64. Well, we all know that was a classic, and to be honest, I think even it, it still has to be beaten. It has not been beaten yet. Even kind of like. The brilliantness of Mario Odyssey is just missing some something for me. It's just, if anything, it was too easy. I felt like this game was harder. Well, maybe it's because I was younger. Um, I prefer this. If they remade this for the Switch, I would buy it straight away. It just has a charm to it. So lots of uh, what's this? Ah, that looks like it's that's Shadows of the Empires, a third person kind of um, N64 shooter. Um, not a bad game, not, not brilliant, but lots of fog, as was, um, well, you know, very common for early 3D games. Fog everywhere, especially on the N64. Um, loads, so that game was rife with it. What's this one here? It says Killer Instinct Gold. There we are, Killer Instinct Gold, as I mentioned before. Um, not bad, but again, it's kind of like Mortal Kombat, really, isn't it? Blast Corpse, made by the people who did Grand Theft Auto later on, uh, later on down the line. Um, yes, kind of. Yeah, you could get into cars and blow things up. So it was kind of like um, not too far away from um, Grand Theft Auto Three in a way, in terms of mechanics. Definitely not in terms of gameplay, though. Like. Not 100% gameplay, really. Like the way the world looked, as you'd say, really. It looked very different. Edge magazine. Edge is still going and it's still very much the same. They've always had that kind of like look about them. Um, it's a good magazine, really. It's not bad. But I wish this was still going now. I think Games Masters ended, unfortunately. Although I have seen, I think they're Fortnite magazines and it says presented by Games Master or something like that. So I don't know if they're still going in that form. Or if they're just leftovers, I'm not sure. Fighting Vipers, so it's a Sega Saturn game again. Yes, Sega Saturn. Look, everything's 3D. The characters are 3D. And they kind of have that pixely, kind of like 3D look to them in the game. <laughs> look at that face. What is he doing? Oh, again, we've always got this token sexy... Well, most of them are pretty sexy ladies, aren't they? I don't know what the heck that character is, though. <laughs> Oh dear. Quake Secrets, a top secrets. I'll tell you what isn't a secret, how good this game is. Although I, I still struggle to get it running on my um, laptop, on my Windows um, 98 laptop. For some reason it doesn't, just doesn't want to load. Or even install, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a version, I maybe I've got a US version or something, I'm not sure. But uh, it's a great game anyway. Um, let's see what else we have. Tekken 2, so this is what I miss. Cheats. We don't have cheats anymore. Tekken move lists and cheats and stuff like that. It's just everything's so it's kind of boring in a way. A game's just a game. There's no hidden kind of cheats or sequences and stuff anymore. I know this is more of a move list, but it just reminds me of those days. I think there was a cheats bit somewhere. In this, there used to be in this magazine. Devil and Angel Jin. Uh, not Jin, uh, Kazima, or his name is. Uh, and then we've got. <laughs> why did they do that? Just big head virtual fire kids. Just why? Why would it? <laughs> to be honest, they made a whole game on that. On and on Tekken 2, you could import a cheat and have the same effect. <laughs> but they did a whole game on it. Here we are, but yeah, these are cheats, look. So we've got like. Micro machines, Mega Drive, kind of like cheats, just cheats. Just you never knew what your game could, could do. That, that's that is that, that is what was great about cheats. There's so many hidden surprises, and we have more ad adverts as well. And if you noticed, it shows the Atari Jaguar and the Atari Lynx. Yet in this whole magazine, there was not one review. Not I couldn't see anything. Actually, on most of the magazines in the pile, I don't see any reviews or anything on it. Um, 
so it shows how badly these game these games consoles were doing because um, they just were not getting enough releases and these magazines weren't covering them as much and this is a third party magazine so it covered everything so the only way well the only thing I saw in these magazines were adverts for the consoles not actual games themselves new games so it shows that they were out of favour and they weren't doing as well and we know that happened because basically Atari Jaguar uh, was a failed console even the Lynx it was a good coloured console but the Game Boy basically kicked his ass even kicked the um, Game Gear's ass um, so yeah it's, it's, it's a sign of the times so you can see a lot of what's happened to the Saturn this is quite early so the Saturn still got quite a bit of content but by the time you get to um, layer issues it's it's pretty much non-existent monster trucks monster trucks Woo! who doesn't like monster trucks I think I remember a game on the Saturn called Hardcore 4x4 and oh, oh, there was nothing hardcore about it Actually, there was one thing. You had to be hardcore to be watching that screen for that long. Even back then, I could see it was a horrible-looking game. And I would just... It hurt my eyes, and it was just ugly. This actually looks not too bad. The making of monster trucks. Ah, the same team behind Destruction Derby. Oh, I'll have to check it out, actually. And if it was ever released, I don't know. This is a making of, so I assume it was. And, and some more monster truck stuff. Oh, look, people have... Oh, oh look at this. There are eight splendid characters to choose from. Each of these is presented in the... Oh, it's not... oh, these are the characters of Monster Trucks, then, I guess. They're, like, they literally look like pencil drawings. It's not, <laughs> not even, like, funny, fully finished art. No, they always try and do a sexy-looking lady. I don't know if you can see those, but... I think that was uh, one of the things. Sexy-looking ladies. They still do that in games now. Not that I'm complaining, but... I guess you're not going to want to look at a super ugly one for ages. Um, yep, letters. So they used to do a letter page where people would just complain or mention what... Um, ah, this person here, this looks interesting. I want to buy a 3DO. Let's read this one because we know that was a failed console as well. I'm quite short of funds, but I have decided I must have a decent console of the next-gen variety. Well, we do know that you should definitely not buy a 3DO if that's the case. <laughs> but anyway, um, I have long been interested in a 3DO and now they are about 90 quid. I'm really interested, but I fear the machine is not having many new releases. Well, your fears are correct. And now you say there may be an M2 upgrade. Do you think maybe around Christmas, especially with N64 coming, the price of the Saturn will come down? Well, let's see what GM advises. You sound, you sound a mixed up kind of guy, Kev. As we confirmed at the last issue, the N64 won't arrive on these shores until March of the first next year. So Sony and Sega will have Christmas all to themselves. Both are already feverishly denying they'll drop the price at Christmas, or that they'll, all that we'll see mid-price classics appearing by then either. It's true that the 3DO is a bit of a snip at 90, but there'll be very, very little software appearing for it in the future. If any, oh, that's it. So any software, if any, so even even back then they knew that is pretty much dead. So both Panasonic and Goldstar. Closing their 3DO departments should hint at the machine's future. Yeah, yeah, we, they already knew then it was dead. The M2 grade is ages away too, and 3DO company are concentrating their attention on PC land. So basically, they're doing development for PC games, and they're closing it down, so don't you buy a 3DO, lad. That's what they're basically saying. Ah, look, Jaguar Dumper, so here we are. So another one, uh, writing about another console. I actually owned one of these, like, about... Eight, nine years ago with a few good box games and I wish I didn't get rid of it because they're quite expensive now. Anyway, I will stop complaining. <laughs> it says, I'm writing after reading about John uh, Benger's letter in GM46. I too was a Jaguar owner hoping to get my hands on a CD drive. Well, as John points out, Atari are wind-up merchants, especially when trying to put a Jag CD on the shelves. After about 11 months of the Jaguar, I've had enough, so I sold it and brought second-hand PlayStation, even though the place is bloody smart sometimes I miss the old chunky 16 button pad and gore of doom only joking by the way I don't think John needs to save his money for long as I saw the Jag CD for 4995 in electronic booty not so long ago ah well you know what if he uh, kept hold of that Jag with all these games and uh, managed to get hold of CD he'd make a bit of a bit of a profit today but it still was a bit of a shit console um, anyway, let's see what GM advises. The problem with the Jaguar is software support. 
a bit like the Saturn and a bit like the 3DO. Uh, and lack of it, there are really only a handful of games in its back catalogue to make you go, ooh, the rest could be done on the Mega Drive or SNES. The new consoles are where the exciting stuff is going on and where the developers are concentrating their talents. So even then, these were old hat, the 3DO and Jag. They were too old hat, so you really had to hop onto the Sega, Nintendo or PlayStation bandwagon. Let's see what else we got here. We're near the end now. I'm getting cramp in my leg as well. Yes, I'm doing this on the floor for you guys. Ooh. I'm nearly knocking over the camera. So yeah, I think that's pretty much um, a look at this um, little history of these magazines. Well, this one in particular, really. And it's the toys are back in town with the Game Boy and Super Nintendo. Um, where's the Mega Drive? It was on the Mega Drive as well. Uh, brilliant um, Nintendo I, I don't know Nintendo Machine Systems I don't know what that even is short for NMS but yes so it's a little look and I thought I'd just start on the first and oldest issue which is this one and to be honest I think it's um, it's a nice little look down memory lane so I hope you enjoyed my waffle and if you want to look at a few more in a few, bit more detail then I can definitely do that so yep yeah. Take it easy guys, and I'm going to finish off my tea before it gets too cold. See ya! Welcome to my consultation zone, where I offer personal tuition to those in trouble. Games Master, can I get lots of blood on Mortal Kombat for the Mega Drive, please? Well, this is a little naughty, but as you ask so nicely, on the ethical code screen, press the button sequence A, B, A, C, a, B, B, while the text is being printed. Everything will go red to indicate that the cheat has worked. Now start the game as normal. As soon as you get into battle, you will see gallons of blood flying around. Thanks. Next. Can I make Street Fighter 2 Turbo Edition on the Super List any faster, Games Master? As a matter of fact, you can. Turn your console on, and when the word turbo strolls across the screen, quickly press down, R, up, L, Y, B, X, and A on the controller plugged into port two. Now, when you start the game, the maximum speed will go up to an incredible 10 stars, making the game faster than ever before. Brilliant, thanks a lot. My pleasure, young man. Next. Games Master, I've heard there's a secret level in Starwing on the SNES. Is there? Now, this is a bit of a goodie. Fly through the difficult asteroids level, then fly at the two large, slow-moving meteorites and shoot the right-hand one. An egg will emerge and explode. Fly towards this and use your retros as you hit it. You will be instantly transported to a secret fruit machine level where you can play for all sorts of bonuses. That's all I'm prepared to reveal this time. More problem cases next week.